everybody, let's uh, get started. We've got a couple more things to cover. We're almost there. When you get to your ABC landscaping uh, assignment, you're going to have to pull in data from multiple worksheets. And so I want to show you how to do that. Um, I'm going to just take clear contents out of that. And I want to keep my formatting, so I'm just going to clear the contents here. And let me show you how to build this formula. So this formula is pretty easy, equal sum, parenthesis, and the key here now is to go down to your tab and hit January. When you do that, you see that the name of your worksheet has been entered with an exclamation, park, exclamation point after it. Scroll up here. I am adding up income, so I'll click here on the cell I want to add, and it is automatically put in there. Next, you hit your plus sign, and we're ready to go to the next worksheet. February, it's automatically entered, and here's the cell I want. So January, go to January worksheet, grab cell B5, add it to February worksheet B5, and we'll go one more time to March B5, and that's it. And we'll close the parenthesis. That is the whole um, formula, equal sum and make sure you have plus signs between each one. When you hit enter here, it automatically pops you back here to your final worksheet and there's your formula there. So because I have in January, I have B5 is the same in January as it is in February, also B5, and March, B5 is also the total. All of these fields are in the same letters in each worksheet. So when I go here to this one, I can actually copy this formula and paste it right here. And because it's following the same patterns, it, it pulls the right data. And the beauty in that also is I can take this, drag it down, and it fills them all. All right, let's build the average. We're going to go equals the word average. Same thing, back down to the tab, and we're dealing with total income plus total income, total income. There we go. Okay, enter, and it'll pop me back to the last worksheet, or the worksheet from which I came. I'm going to copy this, paste it here and then I'll drag and fill it. And now that assignment is complete. So I've got a nice looking layout. I've got a beautiful graph here. Each one of my months is the same layout. It's got a formula here that shows me the difference. So it's the sum of B5, which is my total income, minus B15, which is my total expenses. So when I go to grade these in class, I'm looking for a formula here that adds up all the expenses, B8 through B14, and then a formula here that says take all everything I earned, subtract everything I spent, what is left. You have to make sure that these are in the dollar format where the dollar sign is nice and close to the number. If you have it in accounting, like that, when you go to do the summary page, it won't work. And it especially won't work if you don't have zeros in this one. That is March. So make sure you have zeros there and that they're also in the correct format. Okay, that's about the it on, on that assignment. Let's go to absolute cell reference. This is a, an awesome um, way of learning absolute cell reference for any of you who have to do factoring. Let's say you have a number like 64 and you need to find all the factors of it. So click in one, two. Once I have a series started like this, I can highlight them, grab my fill handle and drag it down. See how it's adding the numbers for me? One through 20. Now what I want to do is I want to take this number, oh, excuse me, I want to take 64 and divide it by this number and I want it to tell me what the other number is. So to do that, I would say equals this cell divided by this cell. So what should my answer be? 
Yes, 64. You're right. Great. So you think, oh, fabulous. We just great grab this and we'll drag it down and boom. But it doesn't work. And let me explain why. When you, this formula is correct. When you go down one cell, it dropped both of them down. So it looked for A2, which has nothing in it. 0 divided by 2 is 0. Once again, computer wins. Here we dropped it down another one and 0. So it makes sense. So what you want to do is change this formula so it always references back to A1. That is called an absolute cell reference. So let me type that for you here. There you go. Muy, muy importante. The key behind that is it always is putting in the number sign. So what you do is you say A1 is my absolute cell. That's the one I always want to go back to. So you take your cursor here and you put a shift number sign in front of the A, shift number sign in front of the 1. Now when I hit enter, it doesn't change that formula. However, when I drag it down, all of the formulas that it inputs here, they're going to change the second cell reference, but not the first one. And now it works. So here it says A1 divided by B2, which is what I wanted. Still A1 divided by B3. So that's what an absolute cell reference is and does. And why is this important? Whenever you have a quadratic equation, is it a quadratic equation? When you have to FOIL something, I'm, I'm talking big time math here. <laughs> when you have to um, FOIL an equation, it's a lot easier if you know your factors. I don't want to learn my factors, so I made up this worksheet. And you get to benefit. So usually if you go 1 through 20 on your numbers, on your primes, then you will be able to pick up just about all the multiples unless you get a really big number. And the cool thing is, is let's say now from 64, now you need to know 122. There you go. All you have to do is change this number to whatever the number is you want to know the the factors of. So that's the absolute cell reference. Let's do a little sorting. Okay, so you have a list of schools here and the principles. You have lots of different ways to sort them. Let's say you want to sort on the name. So the way that I do it is go over here to sort and you could pick A through Z. Let's see what it does. Not a whole lot. Let's try this Z through A. There it goes. It flipped everything and it kept things in line. So Lisa Austin always stayed with this particular school. But there's also another way to sort, which is the way I prefer to do it. Down, go to custom sort. And here you pick the column that you want to sort. So I'm going to say I want to sort by D. The values on D and we'll put it A through Z. So there we go. Now we've got Lisa Austin still at the top because her last name, but uh, you're ordered by last name. This comes in really handy if you have a list of things by city, but it's mixed up and then you want to group the things that are um, in the same city. Uh, it comes in handy all the time. So here's your sort key. Sometimes you can get by easy by using these first two, but if you don't be afraid to go into custom sort and pick your column. Set your value. You've got a couple different options there. A to Z, and there you go. So that's sorting. Fill is the last thing I want to show you, and it's not fill like a fun guy, but fill like F-I-L-L. -L. So I showed you this one already, where if you have a series and you highlight it and bring it down, it'll keep going for you. You can also do the days and drag it to the side, and it'll fill them in for you. Kind of handy. You can do months. like that. Very good. You can do, um, so when I was pregnant I did it so it was every week, so if you did like, um, what's today, the 26th to 26th. And if I had a calendar I would look and see what last week was, so I'll just guess it was 219. Hopefully that's right. No promises. Oops, these are in the wrong order. Now you could highlight these two and scroll down 
and it's going to give you a list every week. So let's just say you, for some reason, wanted to know something that occurred every 28 days. You could use something like this to figure it out. And then you could post it to the fridge and let everybody know. Or, you know, not. But anyway, when I was pregnant, I did this. And then I put, you know, week number here. And then I put in my numbers. One, two, three. And went all the way down to week 40. And then I cried that I had to be pregnant for that long, 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 terminally long amount of time. <laughs> but I, it did help, like, at least let me know when what week I was. People always ask you, and I can never remember. So anyway, there's fun ways to use fill. And um, check my list here. Oh, comments and titles are my last two things. Okay, comments. So you could um, edit these like you edit Word where you grab something and review and hit new comment and I could say something like excellent formula and now this little red thing means there's a comment in there and you have a choice of deleting your comment going to the next one or editing it I'll just delete it but those are what comments are and so those are pretty handy if you have to fix somebody's work titles I have a great worksheet I'm going to show you for titles. Okay, so this is a worksheet I put together for um, a group of education deans and I needed something where I could scroll through the schools on this side and each school would put in their information but I needed this column to stay always showing and the title across the, sh the top to always stay showing. So let me show you how I did this. You go to um, <laughs> I'm like, oh, how did I do this again? Good data. Here's your sword again. You can do that there. Huh. It's called tiles. Here it is, print tiles. Page layout, print tiles. See, I just don't do it very often. So this is the kind of thing I want you to know that you can do it. Um, but. I'm not going to test you on it because, quite frankly, you do it so rarely you have to sort of relearn it every time you do it. But this is where where it's at. It's in the print setup, so it's in the same place where you went to fit to one page, where you put it in the center. But here um, on sheet, it says rows to repeat at the top, and you put um, I want absolutely cell one, and then through cell three. Yeah, and those are absolute absolute row references and this is an absolute column reference where it's saying I want um, column A to, re to repeat on on every sheet. So let me show you what this sheet looks like when it's printed. So there's the first page and the next page. So every page that prints it's just the name of the college and the comments that changes. This always stays the same. So that's sort of advanced but something I've had to do fairly frequently and I thought you might want to know it exists. Alright, that is it.